Okay, really simple. You know, we started out, I started out with this debate about Ayn Rand, and I just, I, I just want to lay some of this stuff out here. A brief rant, if I, if I may. 30 years after her death, Ayn Rand's philosophy of selfishness and billionaire emp- empowerment now rules the world. It's really a remarkable achievement for an ideology that was pushed to the fringes for most of her life and ridiculed on national television in a notorious interview with Mike Wallace. Hey, we've got a clip from that, I believe. We've got a couple clips from that. But it happened. And today, the United States and other independent governments around the world are crumbling while Ayn Rand's billionaires are taken over. And with each new so-called free trade agreement, especially the very secretive Trans-Pacific Partnership, which has less to do with trade and more to do with global governance for transnational corporations, Ayn Rand's reviled state what we would call our democracy, the United States of America, is losing its power to billionaires and transnational corporations. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a very straightforward thing. Ayn Rand hated governments. She hated democracy. We've had, you know, no shortage of objectivists on this program just come right out and say, sorry, you know, democracy is a bad thing. It's mob rule. And as I said earlier, you know, she grew up in Russia and saw her, her dad's, Pharmacy got confiscated during the Russian Revolution, and her PTSD has been turned into uh, government is evil and functions like taxation and regulation and social services to the poor and sick and all that kind of stuff. Makers and takers are what she called looters. And, of course, billionaires and industrialists, Dagny Taggart and Hank Reardon. He's, you know, in her book, this, the modern version of the Koch brothers, the Waltons, Shelley Adelson, according to Rand, they're the atlases holding up the world. When Atlas shrugged, when the billionaires shrugged, the world crashed. I think it's just nuts.